Do you need to track your team's progress during a sprint? Well, a sprint burndown chart in Excel is the perfect lightweight solution for you. And in this video, I'm going to be showing you step by step exactly how to create one just like this from scratch. If you did want to save yourself some time, I have made this pre-built, pre-formatted template available for instant download. There will be a link in the description down below if you did want to pick it up. That being said, let me now walk you through exactly how to create this, make some recommendations and share some explanations along the way so you know exactly what you are building out. So the first thing I would recommend that you do is give your document a title in a brand new workbook or worksheet. That way, if you share this with any stakeholders, they know exactly what they are looking at. It just makes it really clear, really obvious. So I've just typed in sprint burndown chart in B1. I'm gonna bold that out and I'll put some gray uh, fill color as the kind of backdrop there, just so we can differentiate as a, as a heading. I'd also recommend having like a little content area which just explains, you know, who the project, you know, what the project is that this sprint burndown chart is referencing, who's the project manager, um, kind of what date was this created and what was the version number. It's just really important to track this kind of information and you can create kind of little content areas. So what I've done here is I've selected B3 through to E4. We're going to do all borders. And then if I go B3 through to E3 and put that gray, um, fill color in and then bold these, you can see it's just kind of created this nice little area. So this is where we'd obviously be putting the information. But yeah, this is great if you're looking to have several sprint burn down charts across different projects. It's, it's almost like a template at this point now. Then it comes on to building out the main table. Now I'm going to show you all of the different columns I'd recommend and, and data points you're going to want to capture. And then uh, we'll look at adding the dummy data. So firstly, we're going to have backlog uh, task and ID. Now, essentially, we want to be able to list the user stories and their associated tasks for the sprint under this column. We want somewhere to track the story points, which will help to indicate the complexity and effort estimation for each user story. We're going to want to have the ability to assign uh, to different individuals for responsibility purposes, you know, who's responsible for completing each task. We're going to want status and I'll show you how to set it up as a drop down very shortly. Um, essentially, yeah, we want to see the current state of each task. We want an original estimate. So essentially the initial estimation of effort in hours or points required for each task. Then we're going to want um, the number of days that we expect the sprint to run for. So I'm going to do five for this. So I'll just put day one in, in G6 through to day five in K6. Uh, K6, yeah. And then at the end, we're going to put the sprint review. Uh, and this enables us to show the final status of remaining work at the end of the sprint. So that's the core basis of the column headers. Now, what I recommend that you do is just type in user story one here. And then I'm going to put in four tasks. Of course, you could have a lot more than this, but we'll just put four in for now. Um, and then what we're going to do is add some formatting uh, and we can speed this up. We can create this table much quicker if we do the following. So in the first row, so row six with all the column headers, I'm going to put a darker gray background on. I'm also going to bold. And then in row seven, I'm going to put a lighter gray background. And again, that just differentiates it from the column headers. I'm also going to bold. And we're also going to indent. So it's going to in in increase the indent by one here. And that just creates this kind of relationship between the two. And we're going to do the same for the tasks. So we're going to indent twice. So from B8 through to B11, indent one, indent two. And again, you can see this relationship now. And then what we're going to do is if we select from B7 through to L11, press control C, go into B12, control V, and again, and again, and then just change these numbers here. So basically what we've just done then is we've just copied and pasted not only the the data, if you like, or the information, the text, but also the formatting as well. And I've just changed these accordingly. So we've got user story one, two, three, and four. We'll actually create a fifth one. So control V, oh, I lost it. So let me just copy this one, control C, Control V, and now we have five user stories 
here. At the bottom, I'm going to type in planned and actual. Now we can put the planned in at this point. Actual, we will have to update as we go along. Um, but I'll walk you through that shortly. I'm actually going to put a gray background for these rows here. So row 32 and 33, we'll bold it and we'll put the light, light gray. And then from B6 through to L33, I'm going to put all borders on and that just kind of creates that table view. And then we're going to just do a few little things here. So I'm going to select column F, hold shift on my keyboard all the way through to column L and just increase these here like this. We'll also wrap like that. And I'm also going to, on the home ribbon, I'm going to center as well. That'll just center all of the information. Okay, so this is the main table. I'm actually just going to add the dummy data in. So for the purpose of time, I'll just copy this all across. So let me just do that now. And then I'll explain a little bit more as we go on. So let me just make sure I'm in the right place. Control V. There we go. So that's brought all of the data in. If you do need to pause the video to understand you know, how this kind of, how this works, then you can do that. Just bear that in mind at any point. One thing I haven't done so far is actually, I just pasted it in. So it's done that is I've added a drop down to the status column. So let me just walk you through how to quickly do that. Because if you're not copying and pasting, you won't have this in by default. So what you essentially need to do in column E or the status column is just select all the cells from say E7 through to E31 in this example. Click data at the top, data validation, then click data validation. In the allow, select list, and then just type in the different status is that you want. So these are my recommended ones. Not started, comma, in progress, comma, complete, comma. Oh, needs review, um, comma, approved, comma, overdue, comma, on hold. And if you put all of those in, press OK, then that basically means you can select each one of these. It just means that you can keep all your statuses uniform and, and you know, you won't have kind of misspellings or issues with when it comes to reporting against these if you needed to do that. And it also just makes filling this out much easier. Now, as you can see, we've put in some dummy data for the original estimate and also for the days here. Now, the planned, when you're starting this, when you're documenting it, you'll probably just have the planned. You won't have the actual you'll be updating this as the, the sprint goes on. Just bear that in mind, okay? So I have put in dummy data here and, and you will have this by the end. Um, if you don't have data at this point for the actual, just leave it blank, but make sure you have a placeholder. So what I'm saying is essentially, you want these two rows in place because when we build out the chart, you're gonna want to have these, as I say, there and ready. Maybe just put in zero for now, you know, placeholder values. So now we have this, this table, now we can create the sprint burndown chart. Now to do this is really, really simple. So all we're gonna do is we're going to select planned, hold control on my keyboard, select actual as well, and then I'm gonna select these values here. So left click and drag. So we've selected cells B32 and 33, and cells F32 through to L33. Then what we're going to do is click insert at the top on the ribbon here. And then in this charts section, we're going to select insert lines or area chart, and we're going to select the first 2D line. So we're going to bring this over here. We're going to left click and drag, and we're going to move across and we're going to make this bigger. So at the bottom of that chart area here, hover over that left click, drag all the way down. Now, all we need to do is just make a few subtle adjustments, and then I'll walk you through what this is essentially saying. So the first thing is you want to change the chart title. So if I left click here, so once that's selected, I can then press equals. And then if I go over here and select B1, press enter, you'll see it's brought in the text that is in this particular cell. So if you update this at any point, it'll update the chart. So that's really, really good. The next thing I'm going to recommend that we do is change the axis. So the first one here, what I'm going to basically do is left click on that. Oh, actually, no, I'm not I'm going to select. So make sure this is all selected. Right click, then click select data, and it will bring this up. Now, when it comes to the horizontal category or axis labels, click this edit button. And then for the axis label range, 
we want to select day one through to sprint review and press OK. And you'll see that it's updated this accordingly. So I'm going to press OK here. Now we could change the colors of these lines if we wanted to. To do that, you just select one of these, right click, and then you would basically um, you click Format Data Series, and then you'd select the series options, fill in line, and you just change the color. But you'd obviously need to do that for, for both if you wanted to. But what I'd recommend you doing at this point is if you click Marker, Marker Options, click Built In, and then change the type to this little circle. Now, the reason I recommend that you do this, and you're going to want to do it for both lines, is that it just it just makes it visually easier to see the data points. And then we'll do the same here. So left, uh, left click on this, click on this option here, marker, marker options and change it. Click built in and just change it to the circle. And again, you've got that nice distinction there. Now you're probably thinking, what is this showing? Let me just walk you through this because I think that's really, really important. Um, basically, this is, yeah, this is, this is showing, this is visually showing your team's progress throughout the sprint. So the orange line shows your actual remaining work, while the blue line is essentially the ideal burn down rate. So you can quickly see if your team is ahead of schedule, below the ideal line, or falling behind, above the ideal line. Okay, so the planned is essentially the ideal here, if that makes sense. So you can basically see in this example that your team remained behind schedule for the majority of the sprint. So the orange line is above the blue. Now, this pattern is common as teams often face initial challenges and unexpected com complexities. Now, despite starting behind, the team actually maintains steady progress throughout the sprint. OK, so hopefully you can see how this Visualization helps you to identify patterns in your team's workflow, anticipate potential bottlenecks, and make data-driven decisions about sprint capacity in the future. Now, the way this has been set up, if for whatever reason these numbers changed, you'll see it just reflect on here. So as I say, what you're gonna want to do is maybe start off like this, and then as you go through the sprint, start putting in numbers. Obviously that number makes no sense, it would be more like this. It would be more like this. You get the idea, okay? So that might be like 58. That might be 48. You get the idea. That's essentially how this works. This is what you'll be updating as the sprint goes on. So I hope this video has been useful and you now have a sprint burn down chart that you can use and leverage. If you have any questions, comments, feedback, drop them down below. With that said, over to you. Best of luck, and I hope you have an excellent day.